If you're just getting started building your no-code app, you might be finding that it's actually a lot harder than you thought it would be. After all, you're not coding, so it should be pretty straightforward, right? When a lot of people realize that building a no-code app still requires you to develop a specific skill set, it's easy to think that the only realistic option is to pay a ton of money to outsource the development, or maybe to just spend way, way longer building the app than you thought you would, like years longer. But the reality is, if you learn the proper development techniques and methodologies right from the start, Building your no-code app can actually be a lot of fun, and when you do it correctly, you can do it a lot more quickly, and that will allow you to stay in control of your development versus ultimately having to outsource the app. And so in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the biggest mistakes we see people making when building their very first no-code app. And this comes from our own personal experience in guiding hundreds of entrepreneurs from idea to pilot launch correctly and within a compressed time frame. So let's jump right into these seven pretty common mistakes people make with their first no-code apps and stick around to the end. Number six is the one that actually surprises people the most. All right, so the first mistake is not building the first version of your app in layers. Now, the reason why development can feel so daunting so early on is because when you jump right in and you start building your app and you know, you're trying to build one seemingly simple feature and it's taking you forever, you're going around and around in circles, you're banging your head against the wall and you just can't get it right. Not being able to build one simple feature makes the thought of building your entire custom app feel impossible. So if you've had one of those moments, here's the thing to understand. Just like you weren't born into this world and immediately started sprinting down the hospital hallways, you can't jump into building your very first app and immediately expect to build completely custom features perfectly. The approach we have our own clients take is to build their apps in layers, which allows them to build their skill sets in layers as well. So for example, you'll start the development of your app by creating your database. And in correlation with that, you'll build your skill set and understanding of the database. From there, you'll move on to your overall apps architecture, the framework, the pages, screens, the navigation that a user is going to go through. And in combination with that, you'll build your skill set around those things. From there, you'll create the user onboarding or user creation function within your app and build your skill set around that. Then you'll move on to your custom features and continue developing your skill set around those. So everything happens in layers so that you can build and increase the complexity of both your app and your understanding of the tools you're using in conjunction. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this useful so far, then I have a free extended training that I want you to bookmark and head to next. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. And in this free extended training, you're actually going to start taking the individual steps necessary to go from idea to app. This is including things like scoping your app, learning correct development methodology, actually starting to use no-code tools like the Bubble platform. You're going to see what other non-tech founders are building as their first apps. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop and head there after this video. The second mistake is to not split up the development of your full scope app into different versions. So just like you want to take that first version and build it in layers, you want to take your full scope and build and launch it in versions. Now, part of this is because of what we just talked about. Just like you aren't born into this world at a complete sprint, once you do work your way up to that sprint, you're not immediately competing at the elite level, right? You start with the district level, then the state, then the region, the nation, then the world. You work your way up. This gives you the experience, the time, the feedback to develop your skill set correctly over time. 
More importantly though, building your app in phases allows you to create core components and immediately launch those to users as soon as they're helpful. That way you can get early feedback and start iterating quickly. Now that's as opposed to waiting to launch any component of your app at all until the entire thing is completely finished. Launching in phases allows you to get the core version of your app into users' hands as soon as possible so that you can get feedback, start iterating, start generating a revenue and expanding your app and business as a whole a lot sooner. The third mistake we see a lot of people making when they're first building their apps is not getting their value proposition correct until after they actually build the app itself. Now, the reason why this tends to happen is because chances are if, if you're building an app, then you have a really good understanding of the problem your app is going to be solving, the market you're going to be serving, the processes that need to be involved. And so it can be easy to think that all those things are obvious, that you don't need to spend time kind of hashing them out into a value proposition. The thing is, the, the user of your app is going to be the person who is opening up their wallet, taking out their credit card, and actually going through a transaction process. And so in order for someone to be compelled to do that, the value of your app has to be incredibly obvious to them. And 99% of the time, the way that you describe the value of the app that you built is going to be different from the way a user is going to be able to understand the value. Coming up with a really compelling value proposition involves things like taking the current problem that your app is going to be solving and analyzing the processes that people are currently using to try and solve that problem and looking at the pain points, the frustrations that are still existing within those processes with the current solutions that they're using. And then looking ahead, analyzing the same thing, but with your app actually in their hands. So what do the processes look like in that case? And how are those existing pain points and frustrations, how are those resolved? So you really have to dig into the current processes and the future potential processes and be able to explain them very concisely. This also means being able to identify your exact perfect user, whether that be relevant to their job title, demographics, or anything else. Realistically, I want you to be able to explain in one sentence or less that your app helps a certain type of person achieve a certain type of outcome without certain types of pain points. So we help X type of person achieve Y type of outcome without Z type of pain points and frustrations. And this single sentence should not be packed full of 50 different words. It should literally be one sentence. Once you can explain the value that concisely, then you have a foundation that you can build on top of. The fourth mistake a lot of first time app founders make is not starting their user outreach while their first version app is still in development. Now this builds off of exactly what we just talked about, but the reason why it's so important to be able to convey the value of your app very easily is because you want to start doing user outreach while your app is still in development. So here's the deal. Finding users for your app is going to be a lot harder than you think it's going to be. And if you build your app and wait to start trying to find users until after you officially launch it, and then you struggle to find those users, it's easy to think that it's the app that is the problem, right? Users aren't interested in this app that you have now finished. And so it's really easy to just start building more things onto your app, changing the features, trying to pack in more value. Now, assuming that in the very early stages, you already went through a validation process for the initial app idea, then at this point, when you've finished building the first version and you're trying to find users, it is not your app that is the problem. It's that you waited too long to try and find those users. 
realistically, you should be able to get early adopters interested in using your app without having a finished product to show them. And if you can't do that, that's what you need to iterate on. How you are compelling those people to become interested. That's what you need to work on versus adding more features onto your app, changing the features and all of that. The fifth mistake a lot of beginners make when building their first no-code app is watching out and being aware of scope creep, but not watching out and being aware of feature creep. Now, scope creep is when you build more features onto your app than you actually should for the stage that you are in. Now, it's important to be aware of this because more features does not equal better. Your users are not paying for features. They're paying for an outcome. And the easier, the faster, the more conveniently, and the less cluttered of a way you can get users to achieve that outcome, the better. But you can wake up and look in the mirror and repeat that to yourself every single morning. And realistically, it's still going to be very hard for you to actually launch a slimmed down version of your app because it's just not going to feel value packed enough. But that's where feature creep comes in because even if you are sticking to a very specific scope of features, when you sit down and start building them, it is really easy to end up staying within that scope, but making the features way more complex than they need to be for the particular version of your app that you're building. So for the first version of your app, you wanna start with a slimmed down scope. And within that scope, you wanna keep the features as simple as possible. Now, the sixth mistake a lot of first time app founders make, and this is the one that surprises people the most, it's not allowing for multiple weeks of testing before you actually launch your app. So when you are building an app, you're putting in a lot of time and work it's not an easy thing to do when you finally finish that last feature on your to-do list. It can feel like you are reaching the finish line. And because of that, when you start preparing to launch the app and then you realize that a ton of stuff isn't working, it can feel incredibly defeating. But look, this is the nature of app development. It is a constant puzzle that takes lots and lots of testing. Now, all of your app's features, even though they might fall into separate buckets in terms of function, they are all intertwined. So as you build your app, even if you build one thing and it's working fine, then you move on to the next, when you change things in that next feature, it can have a ripple effect on those other features that you thought were you know, completely finished. And so First and foremost, you have to test exhaustively as you go, as you build your app. But even when you do that, you have to prepare to spend multiple weeks testing your app afterwards, after you have finished development. And that's going to be realistically a tedious process. It takes time, but that's the name of the game. That's part of development and it's something to expect. To get yourself through that process, just remember that when you bring those first early adopters on board, the more you can personally fix and resolve issues before that happens, the better, because you want to be able to get feedback on the value and usefulness of your app from those users versus getting feedback on the issues and the errors that they're running into. The seventh mistake I see a lot of first time app founders making is a really simple one. Um, and it's one that's often ignored, but I urge you not to ignore it. It's not acknowledging how big of an accomplishment it is to have completed the first version of your no code app. Now for a lot of people, they build that first version, that pilot app, and all they can think about is how much more needs to be done because this is a slimmed down version. It does not have nearly all the features that they want it to. It's not value packed. It's not the thing they've envisioned. And so they think, man, I just have so far to go. And they see it as like them almost hobbling across the starting line, not, you know, the finish line isn't even in sight. But if that's the way you 
think if you're always looking at your progress as being like not enough, then it's going to be hard for you to build a sustainable business because business growth is not made up of finish lines. Finish lines in business just do not exist. There is always the next level to reach. So if in your eyes, every single goal you have is like that moving goalpost where you can never actually reach it, then it's easy to become miserable doing what you're doing. So look at what you've done. You have stepped well outside your comfort zone, learned a new skill, built a custom product on your own alongside your life, probably the, the job or the business that you you're also uh, doing or operating, right? You've done this huge thing and that needs to be acknowledged so that you can set yourself up for a lot of moments of moving forward. All right, so as you build your no-code app, keep these things in mind. And for your next steps, you're about to see two videos on the screen. Watch those next to help you take it even further. 